Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Bees and Honey podcast. Today we'll be speaking with Brazilian artist Ernesto Neto, who's opening an exhibition at Gallery Max Hetzler in Paris. The exhibition's entitled Ultimatum, and there is so much in this exhibition. I think I'm just going to cut to the chase and have you listen to the artist talk about it. I hope you enjoy this. I have to give a little shout out to Anchor by Spotify because Anchor has really revolutionized how my podcast is done. Uh, during the pandemic, as you can imagine, I had to find a way to continue the podcast. And this was the easiest way to make a podcast because everything was in one place and I didn't need to go to a studio or anything like that. Anchor has all the tools that you need to record and edit your podcast from your phone or from your computer. When you're hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on many listening platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. There's so much support at Anchor as well, moral support, financial support, as you can see from these ads, as well as technical support. If anything comes up, there's always someone there who can help you. Best of all, Anchor is totally free. All you need to do is download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. I hope you are able to get your voice out there too and contribute to the field that you love. Hello. Bom dia. How are you? Bom dia. I'm very good. And you? Very good. So, Ernesto, I wanted to say your whole name because I didn't know it until recently. Ernesto Zaboya de Albuquerque Neto. Is that it? That's my name, yeah. Yes, I'm glad I got the pronunciation correct. You're good. <laughs> so, you know, in some initiation ceremonies in indigenous cultures, you announce yourself or you are announced by the shaman to the spirit world and the gods when the uh, ceremony starts. So now the we have your name out there. Can you okay. tell us how you grew up in Brazil? When uh, you were born? I up in Rio de Janeiro. Mm -hmm. uh, south zone, medium, medium high class, mm -hmm. by the beach, in between the beach and the mountains. Mm -hmm. so, very strong nature there. You mm -hmm. know, mountains in Rio de Janeiro are really big. So buildings mm -hmm. stay very small near the mountains. So this is really strong for us. Yes. Uh, also, we have this big sea, you know, lakes, bay. Mm -hmm. So it's really a uh, strong power. Uh, in between the mountains, there is forest, a lot of birds, a lot of symbiosis, mutualism, you know, a lot of him. It's very strong, the trees and, and the energy of the nature, but at the same time, the energy of the city, you know, city, Rio de Janeiro is a city, city. so mm -hmm. there is all these tensions of a city. So it's a, it's a interesting contrast to live in and full of uh, energy. Yes, yes. And how did you come to be an artist? Like, how did you start working as an artist? How did you know that you were an artist? Well, you know, when I was uh, 16, I believe, I went to the Museum of Modern Art to, there was a school of art there. And mm -hmm. I, I uh, tried to get in a course of sculpture, but then I read the paper to, to, to exercise the potential artist. And I didn't understand this word potential. I got scared about that. <laughs> and I, away, you know, mm -hmm. and I never went uh, really for the first class. Then I became to study engineer. You know, I have a test, uh, I have a big test in Brazil. Mm -hmm. But he, all my, my colleagues, I would like to make electronic games. But all my colleagues, they are talking about uh, like uh, microwaves and things like that. And I was trying to guess what I was doing there even though I enjoy very much the mathematics and the physics class. Mm -hmm. And then I run out of the, uh, uh, jump out to the university to make another test for astronomy. I was already doing, going all the time to the planetarium, reading a lot of books about that. Mm -hmm. and, but I failed on the test. <laughs> then I went to, to Bahia with a friend of mine, mm -hmm. uh, some... The girls were there, 
Uh, we meet a painter in the middle of the way who become our friend, an Italian guy, a little bit older. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we meet other friends. The girls told us, okay, are you guys want to go to the north or to the south? We said to the north, and then they said, okay, we go to the south. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we stayed there. Then we went to the very north of Brazil. I came back uh, by myself to Bahia. In the middle mm-hmm. of the carnival, I met a, a, a young woman that I had uh, met on the way up. She was from Rio de Janeiro. Mm-hmm. And suddenly she told me that there was this uh, course of sculptures in, in clay at Parque Lage, that was very close to my home. So I went there and I began to do that. And mm-hmm. when I did the first one, the guy, uh, it was very traditional, was the last traditional course of this very important school of visual arts uh, happening at the Parque Lage. Uh, and this guy said to me, you know, I cannot teach you very much of what's going on today, but if you want, I can teach you how to cast some, uh, take molds of the clay, cast on uh, cement, uh, I don't know, uh, resin, even uh, bronze and this kind of thing. I said, okay, I'll stay here. Mm-hmm. And I stayed there for one year. In the middle of the year, I also began to study at this school at the Museum of Modern Art. And that's how it became, you know, as soon as I make the first sculpture, I said, well, that's what I want to do in my life. And that's what I'm doing till today. Yes, yes. Well, it was a serendipitous uh, set of circumstances. Sometimes the failure leads you in the right direction. Yeah, yes, like that. I was like the teenager, you know, young teenager, uh, smoking some pot, drinking some beers, uh, and it begins really to, art begins really to make me a good student. Absolutely. So can you tell us about the current installation at Gallery Max Hetzler? Because I, I know it involves a big tree trunk that uh, you had an experience with in, uh, in Brazil. And it includes all of these materials from nature that you mentioned, like leaves, sand, river pebbles, lianas, the plywood tree trunk all these purifying plants you have in there as well? Yeah, this sculpture is something... Uh, I mean, I've been working with all of it since a long time. But for this exhibition, uh, when Samia called me, hey, Anesh, let's do the exhibition. And I said, yeah, let's see. And then uh, suddenly I began to have a vision of a big trunk of a big tree uh, looking like, a, let's say, a Samauma, this mm-hmm. gigantic tree from Amazon, mm-hmm. very uh, queen tree, mm-hmm. let's say, uh, mm-hmm. for the for inhabitants there, indigenous guys, mm-hmm. full of uh, power, you know, it's really something strong, a tree like that. Yeah, you can even, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's really big, mm-hmm. uh, some of them, you know. Yes. And uh, it can be inside of their roots, you know, it's something strong, mm-hmm. a big, big energy. And uh, every tree is a, is a strong energy, you know? I think all the trees, as a sculpture, you know, I'm fascinated about the trees since always, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and then I had this vision and this tree was cut, you know, and the roots of it were going to the walls and some leaves was uh, mm-hmm. would be going up uh, on the walls, uh, and we would we would be sitting down on this big uh, trunk, cut trunk, meditating, and this image of us meditating in a cut trunk was really uh, weird for me. You know, mm-hmm. how come I am uh, in this uh, big trunk? You know, sitting down on this big trunk and meditating, you know, because the tree would be cut. So Mm -hmm. this was something that I was not understanding why it was coming to me. But anyway, I sent this this drawing to Sam. I said, let's do, I had this vision, let's do this vision. It was in June. And then let's say around, uh, uh, let's say September, when I begin really to work on it, think about, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I need to be and I like lay down with my work kind of squeeze, you know, compress. I don't know why. And suddenly <laughs> by the edge of the eye, I begin to see uh, some things. Uh, to, uh, it's like if, if, I, 
you are compressing yourself for the vision come something like that mm -hmm. different different when the vision comes uh, just like the other way around that i told you just before yes and i begin to see something very dense you know was a kind of crochet full of these bay leaves and and it was weird for me i was thinking why this sculpture is coming in a way so dense uh, and then I begin to think, well, Max, uh, gallery, Max Herzler gallery is from Germany. There is all this expressionism in their history. Perhaps it's because of it, you know, because I was not understanding why something was coming in a way so dense, even though we are living in a very dense time. Yeah. Uh, in Brazil, we are living in very hardcore dense time. Uh, mm -hmm. You might know the president and all this pressure uh, forest being cut hardcore, uh, really uh, high, uh, uh, extreme right, you know, very terrible things. But in the whole world, they are now have this war, in, in this war in, in Ukraine, you know? Yeah. So uh, the, the energy was already dense. But I didn't thought about that. I was uh, receiving that and dealing with that. And we begin to do some uh, studs on it. And then uh, I went to an exhibition to see an exhibition in Sao Paulo. I had been in this opening at the exhibition named Mokem Surari, an uh, indigenous exhibition curated by this great guy. Uh, is Bell, mm -hmm. who had just passed away, you know. This guy, he was a big Makunaiman, like he, he talks about. Makunaiman is uh, we normally call Macunaíma, is a big myth of Brazilian culture. And yeah. since the appearing of Jaider in the art scene, he mm -hmm. began to tell us that this was wrong, that the right way to say is Macunaíma or Macunaíma. And he began to tell th this story again, uh, because this story is from his people, Macuxi. Mm -hmm. He once told me that Macunaíma is a big energy, you know, the biggest energy of the universe. I think for every indigenous people, there is this big energy. Now, I think Yogananda would say that this big energy is a love, you know. But anyway, uh, back to the situation, I went to see the exhibition, it was Saturday, uh, one of the last days of it. And then when I left at the Ibirapuera Park, I suddenly I saw a trunk, cut trunk, you know, and I said, wow. I cut the trunk and then I went there and I sit on the top of it and I begin to meditate it. And I soon I sit there. The, the trunk begin to tell me, Ernesto, you got to make me in plywood, plywood layers to tell the people what we are doing with us. Now, we human beings are mm -hmm. doing with us trees, you know, we are, you know, devastating us. And this is uh, something that we really need to meditate it strongly right now, because as you know, uh, we have all this global warming, you the devastation of Amazon. Mm -hmm. And then I begin to think, you know, sometimes it's like countries like the size of France had been already devastated Amazon, bigger than that, you know, if you yeah. take the whole uh, amount of devastation. And, you know, can you imagine how many Samaumas were there? How many in, in, incredible trees were there? Yeah. In, a, in, in each tree, how many animals and little plants and little insects and bees and jaguars and boas and uh, alligators? You know, it's a whole universe that is cut together when they begin to cut the tree. Right. right. And then this begins really to work on myself. And that's a little bit what we are bringing here. We are bringing this tree as a hope, uh, as a prey to, to, for us to chant, dance, uh, and, and, and pray to, to uh, a new conscience of, on our society, you know? Because this, uh, uh, all of it that's being uh, sucked from Amazon, uh, like mm -hmm. the trees, like the gold, and other minerals, yeah. uh, plus all the soil that is uh, uh, produced in mm -hmm. land, 
in the Amazon forest now mm -hmm. after cut all, all the meat first they take the the good uh, wood then they put the cows mm -hmm. because the land is from the state you know so somebody stole the land and yes. they the land they begin to say this land is mine this land is mine then they put the papers with the cricket, crickets Mm -hmm. But the crickets, they begin to, I don't know what they do, they, they shit on it. They, it looks like the paper is old. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why the name of these people are cricketing people, you know, cricket uh, land. Right. And then uh, they go, they go to the, uh, some kind of uh, paper, uh, bureaucracy, official bureaucracy papers, you know. They give these stamps, you know, a lot of houses of it that has in Brazil. And of course, these guys are all corrupted, you know. So it's a level of corruption gigantically. But all of it is bought from outside of Brazil at the same time. Mm -hmm. from, from people in Europe, people in the mm -hmm. US, people mm -hmm. in China, you know. Mm -hmm. So all this, uh, I've seen all this gold, all this wood, or at least 90% of it, mm -hmm. and, and all this soya and all this meat, it goes outside of Brazil. So yes. it's the same situation that we are living uh, in the beginning of the invasion in Brazil with the sugar, uh, the Brazil, you know, that's the name of Brazil. Now, Brazil wood now was mm -hmm. the first thing that people begin to take out of Brazil. Yes. So we live in this situation and this situation is far away in Brazil. This is a pain for all of us because it's, it's a, it's a, it's a consequence of the colonization and mm -hmm. it's out to a still a colonization uh, imperialist, let's say, colonization, but it's also a self-colonization for us Brazilian, you know, which is, uh, we, we don't know how to deal with that, you know, it's, yeah. And, it, well, and nowadays with this president, it becomes much worse. If you know uh, the paintings that we're going to have there, mm -hmm. uh, it's about the situation that suddenly a friend of mine sent a report mm -hmm. uh, about the agribusiness, and they were very proud that the brute wood, the raw mm -hmm. wood, from mm -hmm. Brazil had uh, the ex exportation of raw wood had increased mm -hmm. 650% in the last five years. We see what is just after the coup de start that mm -hmm. happened in Brazil, mm -hmm. you know, very much powerful by this guy Moro, who was a guy who studied with the CIA people, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a big mess structure against... Uh, the people in general, you know, just yeah. about taking the profits, taking the profits, taking the profits. And these profits is killing our uh, enjoyment of life, you know, yeah. because life is wonderful. Life is the best thing uh, we can have in our life. That's yeah. a gift that we receive. You know, it was billions or millions, I don't know how it's billions or millions of spermatozoids that were trying to get in that egg, our mother egg. And each one of us, you, me, and everyone that's listening, is one of these spermatozoids that to get in on that egg, there was millions of brothers and sisters who wants yes. to get into it. Yes. So yes. all of us was digging together for one of us get in. So Absolutely. this is something really special. And we need to valorize my the life of everyone. Yes. So, to have something more, you know, more, more, more balance, more mm -hmm. equality. You know, yes. this yes. Uh, fraternité, liberté, égalité that you guys had uh, shunned yes. and then mm -hmm. so much uh, in this country so many years ago, we are so far from that, you know. That's the, the situation. And that's, that's, that's a little bit what is about that. And I think nowadays that we understand the consequence of the global warming, mm -hmm. that we are afraid about our action, we are beginning to realize also uh, our social action because mm -hmm. we can't separate social than ecological. Because if there was a, a better uh, balanced society in Brazil, mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. would not be cutting the wood. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. nobody would want to buy the wood, mm -hmm. no one would be cutting the wood. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So that's, that's the point we are. Yes, yes. So that's the work you were talking about with the ceramic, the banknotes, the plastic beads and the cotton string with the hands on it. That's the work you're referring to in the exhibition, right? With the yeah. graphs. I'm referring to that because on one side we have this spray 
uh, this this sculpture installation, whatever you want to call it, this art, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. we 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 hope and we pray for a, a, a conscience about mm -hmm. that we are all together, that we are all one family, mm -hmm. and we are. When I say that we are all kids of the earth, mm -hmm. that we, the plants, the birds, the insects, mm -hmm. you know, as a big family yes. of life that mm -hmm. we are here. And then we have these screams, you know, mm -hmm. this canvas, this uh, sculpt sculptural paintings mm -hmm. on the wall, which they all come very dark for me, you know, they all came black to me, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, because we don't know where we're going when we do art, at least myself. I don't know. I, we mm -hmm. don't know why mm -hmm. this, is, this is coming to me, you know, and mm -hmm. you need to respond to that because obviously the art is ahead on us. You know, Absolutely. We, are, we are just human beings, you know, that's, you know, it's that sense and in between us and the sky, us and the infinite, us inside of the earth, that is much more than our uh, blah, blah, blah philosophy. I don't remember the, how to say that in English. Yes, yes. But it, so the art is bigger than us. You know, mm -hmm. and then it begins to come on this situation, you know, because it looks like that this uh, kind of graphics of the amounts of the tons of wood and mm -hmm. the millions of dollars or mm -hmm. the tons of uh, uh, soya, soya mm -hmm. beans and the billions of dollars or gold and dollars, whatever, you know, this looks like it is the cave of us today. It looks like the humanity is going to the cave and painting graphics. Oh my God, so much we produced here. Oh, so much money we, we win this year. We who? Who win this money? You know? <laughs> and the person who wins this money is really in a good shape, living yes. in a, in a, afraid of everything, afraid that somebody stole the person. You know, right. everybody uh, that I see that has lots of money, they're always afraid. You're right. Pulling, uh, uh, in the, uh, these cars that are, you know, uh, I don't know how to call that, uh, protected for guns, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So many Armored cars, yeah. They, they need to create around them that this is, is really a good life. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and the other side, there is people who, uh, it, this is a misery, you know. Yes. There is a misery. We need to consider about this misery that, uh, uh, hello? Yes, I'm here. I'm listening. I'm listening. Now, this misery that comes as a result, as a as a noise, you know, as a that is a and this voice is getting one day we're not gonna be able to listen anything anymore if we don't begin to well, can I tell you something? Please. You are doing exactly what is required right now, which is what I've heard called reverse colonialism. So you are bringing all of those ideas out of the forest to the first world through your work, through your art, through this podcast. You are the spirit of the forest talking to everyone, the spirit of nature. And uh, like you said, we are just the conduits for the message you don't know what's coming out but but thankfully you are here to share this message with everyone thankfully yeah i happy to be here and and this is i have one one more uh saying this on my way to say that but it, that is we are we are not alone there is a lot of people you know who are already seeing it who are already dancing for that who are already rooting for that you know because uh this, this, this is the, a change energy on the earth. You know, this mm -hmm. is the feminine coming up yes, yes. very strongly. This change is already going on since 2012. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why mm -hmm. you have all this organic, uh, organic thinking, uh, mm -hmm. shamanism, uh, raw wood, uh, raw, raw wood, no, raw, raw food. Yes. You know, this idea of organic food, uh, mm -hmm. organic life. Mm -hmm. And I think this comes with this uh, change of uh, X of the earth. And that's why there is so many people crazy, you know, uh, trying to make wars everywhere, you know, yes. uh, or spreading fake news everywhere. Yes. You know, this is, they are screaming because this is their end, you know. Yes, yes, yes it's like the dying cry. Yeah, yeah exactly. I like can, that, I cry. Can I ask you, what does I 
I'm not sure if I pronounce it well. One of the works in the exhibition from 2021. Aya Kuidao Aranaya. How do you say that? Yaya ya, ya, Kuidao Aranaya. Yaya Kuidao Aranaya. Yaya Aranaya. Yaya Kuidao Aranaya. Aranaya. Yaya Aranaya. Yaya Kuidao Aranaya. So it's an indigenous song? No, this is a chant that I receive uh, uh, the day after. Uh, because this sculpture, she's a, a daughter. That's why Dao. Dao, mm -hmm. in fact, is Do, daughter. And I was doing, uh, as a little family that came out when I was doing exhibition, uh, that that is going on now in in their in their kind of uh, very popular market in mm -hmm. Salvador Bahia. Mm -hmm. Salvador Bahia is a very strong city, you know, very important city in Brazil, full mm -hmm. of music. You probably know, mm -hmm. and this idea to have this little gallery in this market that name is Common Place, Lugar Comum, mm -hmm. was from Vicky Muniz, the artist. Mm -hmm. So he created this gallery, and I uh, am doing the first show. Mm -hmm. And I uh, and this sculpture came uh, not this one, but the mother of this one uh, came on this dance. And the day after of the opening, this chant came to me: Ya ya kui arana ya, ya ya kui arana ya, aran aran ayana ya. Ya ya would be the body. The masculine, mm -hmm. the feminine body, the mm -hmm. body full of perfume, full of dance, full of life. Mm -hmm. Ui, the gravity, the spine, mm -hmm. the connection between the infinite and the earth, the sky and the earth, you know, our sense of balance, our sense of direction. Mm -hmm. Dao would be the daughter. Yeah? Dao is mm -hmm. Dao from daughter. D-A-U. Uh, mm -hmm. In Portuguese, it's more Dao, but in English, would be Dao. Because mm -hmm. uh, she is the daughter of Yayakui Aranaya. Aran is from spider. Spider mm -hmm. in Portuguese is aranha. Aran is mm -hmm. uh, the spider who, who, who makes the tesselage, the, the knitting, the weaving, the crochet, you know, the, the, the entity inside of us, you know, the animal entity to, mm -hmm. to hunt, to be smart, to, to prepare the net, you know, mm -hmm. to work, to be <laughs> spiritual and practical at mm -hmm. the same time. Mm -hmm. And Nawa is the dance, you know, Naya is the dance, dance, mm -hmm. dance, dance, dance. It's the, it's the dance of the body, the collective dance, all of us together. So all this uh, cosmic dance that is around us, you know, is uh, we exchanging here now, we talking to each other, the people on the street, you know, this is uh, the dance. So mm -hmm. that's uh, how came uh, this chant. And in reality, the chant came first. And then I begin to, the day after, uh, this, uh, uh, this understanding. Uh, understanding is an important word, of course, but it's, it's a kind of understanding uh, of each part of mm -hmm. it. So this piece and, has a lot of spices in it, right? Yeah, it has. I think it has... Uh, clove. It made the, the, the string is already dyed with curcuma, turmeric, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know. And then it has clove, cumin, pepper, black pepper, if I, mm -hmm. and ginger. Mm -hmm. And has the stones on its hands as, mm -hmm. as the counterweight. Yes. So uh, this body, this belly, uh, is, is going to be in the center of this room with all these black, dark, heavy uh, sculpture paintings. Mm -hmm. uh, to to give life, you know, to yes. to to moderate the situation, to give us a uh, 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 to to spread a uh, a uh, a kind of um, a spinning, you know, a gira, a uh, uh, a dance around these paintings, you know, or, or as an exos mm -hmm. inside of it, you know, to blow our energy, you know. Uh, healing energy, something about life, you know, real life. That's a dance. Yaya kui aranaya. Yaya kui dao aranaya. Yaya kui dao aranaya. Yaya kui do aranaya. Dao dao. 
Yeah, well, I think uh, between the sound and the scent of all of those spices, people really must get out of their mind and into their body in the space. And I know that's a, a big intention of yours with the work, to come uh, back to ourselves. It, it's a small work now, but uh, yeah, it has its it, it blow, you know, it, it, it's yeah. a little voice. Yes. So I wanted to tell you, you know, uh, when you had that huge installation at the Biennale in 2017, I was with my two-year-old son. And can I tell you, he really loved the work so much. We sat in there for like over an hour and he, he was really, he got it. He got it. He really got it. How has your work changed since then, since 2017, before the pandemic? Bom, let's say that in, in uh, this work I was doing uh, together, I mean, uh, like in, in relationship with the Hunikuin people, uh, these great people mm -hmm. from uh, Amazon, mm -hmm. uh, from Acre, in the Amazon forest, state mm -hmm. of Acre, that I met. They live also, uh, uh, they are like 13,000 people. There is, uh, let's say, 12 regions mm -hmm. in, in in Acre, mm -hmm. uh, five different places, but also there is, there is uh, Hunikuin people living in Peru, uh, mm -hmm. the country Peru, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I have a relationship especially with some people who live uh, in a river, near, two rivers near, uh, named Jordão and Taraka, mm -hmm. even though I know some Hunikuin from other areas too, mm -hmm. and uh, I had been uh, involved with them since 2013 when I went there the first time. I, I, it's like life, you know. I was doing there, a friend of mine said, and that you should meet the shamans, you should meet the shamans. Yes. And then some years later, she was going there. I went with her, she sent a link. I have no nothing heard about Kunikuin. They also called Kashinawa. Mm -hmm. And I never even took a look on the link. I just put the city on the Google Earth. Mm -hmm. It's Jordão. And I went there, and it was I uh, was swollen by the force, by the boa constrictor, you know, by the force, mm -hmm. because uh, they are very powerful, you know. They have a huge knowledge. They are the voice of the forest. They are the forest, you know. Yes, yes, so yes. it's something really strong, and a lot of uh, uh, very wisdom. They mm -hmm. are. So we we did this uh, some exhibitions together, trying to spread out this voice and this spread out this healing and also to be together né? is a way to be together yes. and I uh, then uh, in the year after we did the Gaia Madre Tree where mm -hmm. there was together the, so the Yawanawa people and the Tucano people mm -hmm. uh, plus uh, besides the Hunikuin who were there too yes. then I did some other exhibition in Rio de Janeiro after in São Paulo I did a big uh, uh, kind of retrospective, but in the center of the, the, the institution, uh, the Pinacoteca, okay. there was a piece named Cura Bra Cura Te, what means healing Bra, healing Te, what yes. means healing Brazil, healing Earth. Very much just after the, the, the election of this terrible president that we have, this absolutely uh, worst of humanity you can imagine. That really, now when we see how dark uh, or how uh, terrible we can be as a human being, mm. how uh, disconnected what, of what it is really important in life. But anyway, so we had a trunk to be cut there to destroy this idea of the trunk, who was a trunk, mm -hmm. a torture trunk uh, mm -hmm. during the slavery, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because this guy is he's, uh, during the dictatorship. There was uh, these torture people, I mean, mm -hmm. torturers, the guys who make the torture. Yes. And he liked these guys. He think this is good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he liked this kind of actions. Now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we did something, we have a, a kind of, uh, we cut this trunk, taking out the sugar, soya beans, coffee, uh, minerals, uh, because the same situation that we have, the situation of this, taking the things out of the earth, colonizing all of it. So in a way, there is a relation to the trunk here. And uh, on these ceremonies, we have a kind of a, a presence, voice, words, mm -hmm. chants, dance, 
whatever mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the guests uh, from indigenous and also Afro Brazilians, even African. There was an African woman from uh, Cote de Ivory, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, she was amazing. She was talking about the spirituality of the of one root, Kara. Uh, of the Kara, you know, this this woman was incredible. It, uh, all of them, you know, because the, the question, uh, Nicolette, mm -hmm. very important thing that happens also, uh, and for mm -hmm. us in Brazil is very strong, is that mm -hmm. our first mother in Brazil is an indigenous woman. Yes, yes. And for many years, the first Brazilian, the second, and uh, uh, second, third, and whatever, was mm -hmm. a boy or a girl, mm -hmm. uh, uh, son or a daughter of an indigenous woman for many years. And then many, of us, son or a daughter from an African woman. Mm -hmm. the, the European women just arrive uh, later, like 250 years later. Some of them arrive, you know, but there was a, a lack. And so most of Brazil is made, uh, is, is people is originally from uh, indigenous and African women. But we just study, yes. Yes. we just study uh, uh, Western culture. Absolutely. And uh, it's the dominant uh, education system, which obviously is not doing us all that good. So tell me next, what are you going to do? Now we have this exhibition in Paris. And to be honest, you know, after speaking to you, I think I'm going to come for the opening. <laughs> I, I, just, um, I, ha I have to come next week, I think. I'm going to look into it after we get off this call. But, but this, this, this thing of education that you begin to talk uh, is, is quite something really important, you know, because mm -hmm. the education in Brazil is... We have the opportunity, and we're gonna have have that. Mm -hmm. I hope. And and if I, I'm talking about the future, that's something that I want to work on. Mm -hmm. You know, I think mm -hmm. I am working already to mm -hmm. to promote the idea of a culture of uh, education that involves mm -hmm. African and uh, indigenous knowledge, mm -hmm. mythology, mm -hmm. uh, culture. You know, mm -hmm. and I think it would be very good for you guys in Europe too. Yes, and, and in America as well. Well, I Oh, decided, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, but I decided to homeschool my son for that very reason, because when you think about, yes, uh, things like uh, history, mythology, we don't only need to know about the mythology of Greek or Roman or Nordic or whatever else they teach in schools. You're right. We need the mythology of the indigenous cultures, the African cultures, and uh, many others that are not given... The time of day i mean forget about the american indians or the native americans as they're called now politically correctly all of these things we still have to learn or relearn there is there is one thing you know the samba in brazil in rio de janeiro samba there is a sentence that is so important that the sentence from the cart i think then i exist in my opinion and this sentence is bum bum patikum bum pro gurundum which is an onomatopoeic sense. Yes. It doesn't have explanation, a logic explanation. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is a, a sentence, a speech spoken, uh, yeah, spoken, I believe, mm -hmm. from Ismael Silva many years ago, uh, explaining us uh, how the samba has shifted from tan, 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 tan to bum, bum, pati, bum, bum, pro gurundum which they want the people dancing, going ahead, moving ahead, and not stay in the same place dancing, like in a ring, you yes. know, but yes. cross in the, uh, in the avenue. And then they change the rhythm. And one day I was discussing that with my friend, saying that this is so important that I think then exists. I get out of the room of my to have a meeting with my wife and my kids. There was a big mess in our home. Mm -hmm. uh, just in the middle of the talk with this friend of mine, and my kids were they were in a fight. And I said, take it easy, guys, take it easy. And the younger one said, come on, brother. You don't know what you're talking about. And you come in speaking things. Yeah, and that's bad translation from my side. But anyway, I okay. said, and then I had a click and I said, I know, yes, I know, yes. And, you know, they were discussing because then uh, they come to the, to the living room. Uh, my wife was there. They come mm -hmm. down a little bit and then they explode again. I was drumming, you know, playing yeah. drums while mm -hmm. they was coming down. 
-hmm. And he was trying, because you know what, what's the discussion? They want to buy a pizza, and one of them have not uh, told the flavor yet. Uh. So when he said that, you don't know what is going on, and you, you, and you come here, and you say something to get in. You know, I don't know how to say the word in English. And I said, I, I know, yes, I know, yes. So when they, he say that, he's talking about, I think they don't exist. To judge that, I need to listen one, I need to listen the other, and then I would make a judgment and see who are right and who is wrong, right? This is a key point on the Western society, yeah? right, wrong, yes, yeah, yes. light, dark, and this thing. When I said that, him, I know, and it was about the boom boom patikum boom pro gurundum. Because what I understand was the boom boom patikum boom pro gurundum was out of balance. The yes. energy was out of balance. The drumming was out of balance. Mm -hmm. And first, they need to come down to a good balance to be able to go on in what they both want together by the pizza. And then we see all these wars and all these fights of the people discussing who is right and who is wrong. And that's not the question. We need to come down and what we want as humanity. Yes, you know? yes, yes. So that's no kind of knowledge of the drums mm -hmm. that the African has or mm -hmm. of the maraca mm -hmm. that the indigenous mm -hmm. has or even the music that the art has. Yes, yes. It's yes. something that can teach a lot to us. Yes. And that's what I mean. This is not valorized yes. uh, because you cannot write about that. Mm -hmm, in, a, mm -hmm. in a logic way because it comes from another structure but these guys they are studying that since long time mm -hmm. it's not universities mm -hmm. it's different mm -hmm. study that's why i say that they can help very much our understanding of life mm -hmm. and our having a better life and that's why it could be good on a school if you arrive in the school and we do a dance and then go to study something and then begin to do another chant from another culture another mm -hmm. dance and then study more you know this this is uh, we need to bring our body yes to the school and not just our mind you know that's the, the point for me anyway. Yes, yes. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Ernesto. Thank you for sharing all of your ideas, all of your spirit, all of your experience, all of your work. Thank you so much. And uh, I can't wait to see your exhibition. Okay, Nicolette. Hope to see you there. Take care. You too. Bye. Have a good evening. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Ernesto Neto. Uh, hopefully I'll be in Paris next month and I'll get a chance to see this wonderful exhibition. If you are in Paris and uh, you get a chance, obviously don't miss it. And uh, hope to see you again soon on the Bees and Honey podcast. Thanks to everyone at the Max Hetzler Gallery who helped to put this interview together.